Ford High School Weekly is brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. And by Rib Crib, smoking good stuff since 92. Welcome to Ford High School Weekly. I'm your boy, Dion Amade. And right now we're sitting with my man, Jalil Johnson from Putnam City North. Man, a tear off the end and already committed to Oklahoma State. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm good, man. How are you? I'm blessed. Not not too bad, not too bad. So I, I know the season's underway. I know you're, you know, I'm catching you after practice and, you, and you're working hard and, and man, you're looking good. I, I caught the Putnam City West game. So congratulations on the start of the season. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. So here at Ford High School Weekly, what we like to do is we like to get the viewers to know you outside of the football field and, and, and get to know your, 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 you know, your likes and dislikes before we get to the hard hitting questions. You cool with that? Yes, sir. That's fine. All right. Let's go ahead and start it this way. I already know with the hat that you're wearing that you're you're, you're a basketball fan. So go ahead and tell me your, your favorite team and why. I mean, my favorite team is the Oklahoma City Thunder, but, you know, they've been, they're kind of off and on right now. So yeah. I'm rocking with the Atlanta Hawks right now. <laughs> Trey Young not not, too, guy, not too bad. Like you said, so Trey, Trey's your dude, huh? Trey's my guy, yeah. So is, is Trey Young your favorite player in the NBA? I'll say my favorite player is Russell Westbrook, but Trey's definitely a close second. Just grew up watching Russell, or why, why, yeah, why is he I, your favorite? Yeah, grew up watching Russell Westbrook. He's in a lot for Oklahoma City. Uh, you know, I love his vicious dunks. You know, he, he's just a great ball player, man, a great passer. You know, he's just a Hall of Fame player, man. I love him, man. I, I can't argue with that. I can't argue with that. It's interesting. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to see what he does with the Lakers this year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go to our sport, okay? Football. Who who would you say is your favorite player? Probably Kyler Murray. I yeah, <laughs> yeah, Kyler Murray. I love that guy, man. So what? So what about Kyler's game? Are you intrigues you the most? Uh, just how good of a quarterback he is. You know how he's able to scramble from defenders. Hopefully, I don't have to deal with that. <laughs> but you know <laughs> how he can scramble from defenders. You know how. He could throw on the run. He's just a great quarterback, and you know, uh, I, just Kyler. He's just he's just that guy. <laughs> All right. So before we got on here, we were joking with your dad about you know eating and 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 you making sure you stay you maintain your weight and everything. So I gotta ask you, what's your favorite dinner? Uh, it's definitely my mom's chicken Alfredo, man. I love eating it. I love it when she cooks it. She knows that I love it. So every time she cooks it, she's a, I'm the first one she calls to come get their plate, and you know. Uh, I drink my protein after practice, after I lift, all that, to make sure I maintain my weight. So, you know, when I get to OSU, I kind of have a head start, you know. So that's how I maintain my weight, you know, and my favorite dish. <laughs> well, I'm telling you right now, you're going to love that training table, but it's nothing like mom's cooking. I mean, chicken Alfredo, Man. I don't know if they can touch that. <laughs> Up next, Jalil is committed to Oklahoma State. When Ford High School Weekly returns, we'll see why he cast his lot with the Pokes. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're talking to my man, Mr. Johnson from Putnam City North. Now, Jalil, football season has been pretty intense thus far. How is your team faring so with it? Uh, Man, uh, we're we're doing great right now. I would say we definitely have a lot of work to do. We still need to keep working. You know, we're still trying to work to our championship level. I wouldn't say we're there yet. So, you know, we just got to buy into the weight room, make sure we're doing what we need to do outside, listen to our coaches, and we'll be straight. Man. So early in this season, what has been your favorite game so far? Definitely the PCO game. Unfortunately, PCO came out on top, but it was definitely a fun game. You know, the rivalry, you know, all the – uh, noise talking we were doing back and forth you know just being able to enjoy that for my last time you know senior year that was probably my favorite game so far so do you do a little bit of talking on the field or are you one of those uh quiet guys i make sure i'm one of the quiet ones because if we say something get a personal foul boy them, <laughs> the, the quality time with coach is it's not it's not good i don't like it <laughs> quality time with coach so the that's what they call it nowadays <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right, so let's let's go ahead and, and talk about you, uh, your beginning stages of playing the game and, and, and how you got involved. Like, what was your first memory of, of playing football and, and how did you get started? 
So it all started, you know, with T-ball, you know, I didn't, I wasn't really good at T-ball. So I cried my first game and my parents was like, you know, let's put them in football. So I went to go play football. Uh, I played for my uh, friend's dad and they saw potential in me right then and there, you know, when I was like six years old. So it was just, and then ever since then, you know, the love for the game has just continued to build on me. And, you know, I just love the game of football. And fortunately enough, you know, I made it all the way to the point this point now, and I'm, I'm just blessed, man. I'm just blessed to be able to continue to play. So, so with that being said, let me ask you this: What's your favorite part of the game? Tackling. I love hitting people. <laughs> that is that is my favorite thing to do, man. Hitting people, being able to get past the offensive tackle. You you feel good when you you know when you when that move you've been working on just works, and you get you know you get a sack off of it. You know, so it makes you feel excited you feel good after it man so my favorite thing is definitely you know being able to tackle people and hitting people man so speaking of moves and techniques and and working on things as far as practice and in the games how do you get better week to week or you know in the off season for you know working on that technique and working on those new moves yeah um i, I watch a lot of youtube videos of some of the greats aaron donald uh Khalil Mack. I, I watch a lot of those people. Von Miller. You, I watch, you know, some of their techniques. I watch what they do. You know, I'll go outside. You know, I'll put some cones down. I'll run some foot drills. I'll put, have a ladder. I'll go work on that and the hand drills. It's just I, I do. I do a lot of research on great players now. So, you know, they can help me out so I can become one of those great players. Hopefully. Well, I believe that you can be, but hold off on those Aaron Donald drills because he'd be practicing with knives and stuff. So we got to we got to hey. make sure we got we'll, we'll save that for later on. All right. Not yeah, right now. Yeah, we'll save that one a little later. But you know. <laughs> so so is there any any coaches that are kind of, you know, giving you some drills to, to help you along or is it all kind of, you know, self research and, and, and you know, self installation? No, I get I got to shout out my defensive line coach, man, Coach Rob at PC North, man. Uh, he's taught me a lot of the stuff I know now. Uh, he's helped me. De he's developed me all the way up into what I am right now to this day. And I can only thank him. Man. I, thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. <laughs> when did you realize that you were a player that could take this game to the next level and, and were a, was a D1 type of player? When, when did you realize that? My When I first realized it, is when I was in my living room and I get a call from Eastern Michigan <laughs> and they was talking about, you know, asking me, you know, uh, do I love the game? You know, do I love family? You know, how's, how's football going for me? And just to be able to hear the words come out of his mouth, man, we like that about you. You know, we want to offer you to come play Eastern Michigan. It, it was, I was like, wow, it's, it's beginning. Like, <laughs> It's, I'm starting to get noticed, man. I'm, I'm blessed. I was blessed for that moment, man. That was definitely one of the happiest moments of my life right there. So it took for you getting your first Division One offer for you to realize that you had the potential to, to make it to the next level. Yes, sir. Because uh, I, I always have, I always try to remain humble. I try to, you know, I, I know that as, as quickly as I earn that offer, I can lose it. So that's what keeps me motivated to, you know, keep going and keep going and keep going. And it was just like at the time I didn't think any of this was gonna happen because you know I had just came off of uh, a knee injury from my sophomore year. It was my junior year. It's my first year starting varsity. I didn't think I was gonna get the attention that I did. So when I heard that first call, I was like, "Wow, this is this is really happening." <laughs> like this this is what's up, man. So what made OSU be the school that you decided to go ahead and make that commitment to? So when I when I went on my official visit up there, it, it just felt like the campus just felt like home, just off rip. It was just like, I like it here. You know, I love it down here in Stillwater. Then it's just, you know, being able to talk to the coaches, the coaches treat you like family up there, you know, uh, getting able to talk to Coach Gundy, hanging out with uh, Tyler Lacey, uh, the defensive end up there, you know, tell him telling me about the experiences up there, you know, all the fun he's having. It, it was just, it, it, I had no reason not to. I wanted to stay in Oklahoma. It Staying in Oklahoma played a part in it. And it was just like, this is where I want to be. Like, I like I love it here. So I went ahead and decided to hit him with those two words, I commit. We, we, we 
have talked about the season a little bit, but there there's some things that I, I wanted to ask you as far as your team and, and your potential and what you guys are hoping to accomplish this season. Me and my team, we definitely want to become a championship caliber team. We feel like we can do it. Uh, we put in a lot of work to get to this point like now. Uh, we've been building up on the past few years. You know, unfortunately, we got knocked out the playoffs. But I feel like this year, like a lot of our seniors, you know, they know what they're doing now. We all bought into the weight room. You know, we all put on weight. So I feel like we can really make a push uh, towards the championship uh, ball, man. Bring home a gold so, ball. I hear you. So, so what? is the one thing if you can if you can pin it down that your team is going to need to do to go ahead and accomplish that goal effort we definitely need effort if we just keep that effort and you know we stay on top of our stuff you know we'll be solid man. and we definitely need the effort so you as an individual what are some of your goals for this season i'm aiming for the sack record i really want to try to break it or at least get close to it you know uh I want to just, I just want to have fun my last year being here. Uh, you know, I really want to bring home a gold ball to my high school. That would be really cool, you know. Uh, but my main thing is really aiming for that sack record. So, so what is the sack record? If I'm not mistaken, I believe it's high 40s. It's somewhere like high 40s. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what you got right now? I believe I'm at seven six seven six or seven sacks right now all right all right well my man when you when it's you when you break it <laughs> nah you got a long way to go but when you break it you're coming right back here on ford high school weekly and we're gonna we're gonna talk about it <laughs> <Bet. laughs> well jaleel thank you so much for joining us this evening and uh man i can't wait to see what you do through the end of the season and what you do at oklahoma state so thank you for joining us and uh, i appreciate you for for taking the time to talk with us Yes, sir. I appreciate you having me, man. And remember, go Pokes. <laughs> That's right. Go Pokes. <laughs> there are some big games on this week's schedule. My man Michael like Knight will be getting like us ready for some football when the Ford High School uh, Weekly extra. returns. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. You know what time it is. Every week we talk to my guy, Michael Knight from Prep Red Zone. Michael, how's it going? It's going good. It's, you, now that we're into the second half of the regular season, man, you can start feeling a little cold air in the in in the weather. So, uh, man, it's you know playoffs right around the corner. It's great. What have you seen this week that's kind of caught your eye? I mean, week six is huge in terms of matchups that have you know playoff implications. You, know, you can't talk about week six and the, the slate of games this week without talking about 6A2 specifically. Um, in my opinion, the top four teams in that class right now, Big Speed, Choctaw, Booker T, Washington, and Sand Springs, and they're all facing off against one another. Booker T goes to Sand Springs, Big Speed goes to Choctaw in a rematch of last year's state championship game. That's one versus two. Uh, so week six is massive, man. And then in class 5A, you have another state championship rematch with uh, Carl Albert taking on Bishop McGinnis. Obviously, those two teams very familiar with one another. So while week five was awesome because it was the halfway point of the regular season, the schedule wasn't what it is for week six, where we have some really great games all across the state from 6A1 all the way down to 2A and A. Uh, week six is, is shaping up to be a really, uh, really strong week, especially in 6A2 because you also throw in Midwest City taking on Dell City. Dell City just got a big win over Stillwater last week. So uh, it's going to be a big week, especially in 6A2. All right, let's quickly talk about Sand Springs and Booker T. Washington facing off this week. What do you like about this game, and who, who are you leaning towards? I, I'm probably leaning to Booker T. just because talent alone, you know, they're like I've mentioned multiple times, you know, they're one of the more talented teams in the state, arguably the most talented roster in the state. But Sand Springs is so balanced. They can beat you with the running game. They can, with Blake Jones, their senior running back, they can beat you with the pass with Ty Pennington. I don't know if they're going to beat Booker T with the pass against that secondary, but that's when you trust the running game. That's when you trust Blake Jones. 
and Sand Springs has this thing rolling right now. So I, I mentioned to you, you know, Sand Springs, they have this three-week stretch where they play Booker T, Bixby, and Choctaw all in a row. It wouldn't surprise me if the Sandites were able to pull off one, maybe even two wins during that stretch, which is an absolute gauntlet run. But right now, I'm leaning to the Hornets, but I would not be surprised at all if Sand Springs was victorious on Friday. And, and speaking of the two uh, other teams that you mentioned in that little lineup for, for Sand Springs, Bixby and Choctaw face off, and it's one of the biggest games of the season. Everybody has it circled on their calendar. Uh, rematch from last week's, excuse me, not last week, last year's championship game. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, this game's been circled on everyone's calendar since the teams walked off of Wantlin Stadium's field in Edmond when last year's state championship game concluded. Um, man, it, it's like I said, it's really evenly matched. I think that Bixby certainly has the edge because they've been there. They know how to win. Uh, but Choctaw's really good. They've looked, they've looked outstanding. Obviously, people know about Steele Wasser, their star quarterback at the junior, yeah, just a junior. Uh, but Deshaun Brown is a what, playing like a man on fire at the defensive end position. He's going to give Bixby's offense some problems on Friday night. So while I think it is a, an evenly matched game, I can't pick against the Bixby Spartans until someone knocks them off. I know it's kind of a cop out, but they've won 41 games in a row for a reason, and they might be making it 42 on Friday night. But this is going to be arguably their toughest test of the season. Well, we got it over here. Cox, your view, and I can't wait to uh, go down there to see both of those ball clubs face off. But my man, uh, any recruiting news that you got for us that happened last week or, or previously since we've talked? Well, the biggest news uh, just came out earlier today. Gentry Williams, the top prospect in Oklahoma's uh, 2022 class from Booker T. Washington. He's going to, he set a commitment date. He's going to commit on October 18th, I believe, uh, uh, October 18th, later on in October, he's going to commit. I believe he's down to USC, Florida, OU, and Missouri. Uh, now you might be thinking Missouri, what's, you know, how do they fit in with those perennial blue bloods like OU, Florida, USC? Well, remember JJ Hester, former Booker T standout, is uh, now at the University of Missouri. Maybe there's some kind of connection between Hester and Williams, uh, but that's the biggest news in terms of uh, recruiting in the last week or so. Well, Michael Knight, thank you so much once again for joining us this week, and we look forward to talking with you. But for everybody who wants to get more information from you, where can they find it? You can check us out on Twitter, as always, at Prep Red Zone OK. And October's a big month on the website. We're updating all of our recruiting rankings. This week, we released our first ever 2025 watch list. We're not ranking the freshmen, but we tell you who some of the freshmen are that have been standing out so far. And every single Monday, we'll have a new update. So starting next Monday, we'll have our 2024 rankings. Then we'll do 2023 and 2022. So October, a big month in terms of uh, checking that out on Prep Red Zone Oklahoma for all the updated prospect rankings across the state. Well, that's Michael Knight for Prep Red Zone. I'm Deanna Mate, and we'll be right back after these quick messages. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. Last week on the Ford Game of the Week, Deer Creek visited Putnam City North, and Jinx headed over to Broken Arrow. It started with an interception tonight. That set the tone. Javion Jones and Deer Creek pretty much rolled from there, Mark. Once they got going, they were tough to stop. They did. Once they got going offensively, they were tough to stop. And, and you know, Putnam City North defensively just didn't have an answer for what Deer Creek was bringing to the table offensively tonight. They were able to run the football at will. They were able to throw it. We just talked to Brett Pence. Lots of time to throw it. They set a tempo on defense as well. You saw the big hit on Laverty on the sideline and really kept him in the pocket where he wasn't able to do anything, you know, from a defensive standpoint. But the offensive explosion tonight, I think, from Deer Creek was what was really impressive for me. And when we heard Brett Penn talk about he thinks he's got the best offensive line in the state. You know what? He'll have a lot more time to continue to throw the football if you keep giving those guys props like that because they did play that well tonight. Take a look at our Ford final stats tonight. Total yards much closer, but 
The rushing game never got established for North. They ended up having to throw for 164 yards in the second half, but you figure if North's going to go on and have a successful season, they'll need to rush for much more than 55 yards a game. Those numbers on the other side for Deer Creek, they'll take that every week. Well, I think Deer Creek obviously would take that every week, and, you know, one of our keys was establishing the run in this in this ball game. Everything comes off of that, especially for Putnam City North, and the one way you give your quarterback more time is to run the ball effectively and they were not able to do that at all in this game and then only six passing yards the first half you come back out the second half you're able to do some good things throwing the football week two of district play high school football Ford game of the week on your view the broken arrow tigers hosting the number one team in the state jinx ba at home for the first time this season second play of the game they give up a 61 yard touchdown pass jinx on top seven nothing shaker rice to glennie jones yeah glennie jones taking it deep and for the second play of the game to match his jersey number but guess what zig he didn't just score once but he scored twice take a look at this fade route to the corner of the end zone as he hops up grabs that and says i'll take that one too but ba got into the fold as fox makes a magnificent grab on the goal line, snatching that one away from the Jinx defender to put B.A. on the board, but that's not the only time they would score. This time as well, my man, Dretrick Moore, gets into the end zone with the nice pick six and puts B.A. on the board, but Jinx said, hold on, wait a minute, I got something for you. That's Jaden Carroll, Jaden Hollywood Carroll going into the end zone, and Stafford says, you can do it, I can do it too, as he trots into the end zone as the O-line parts the Red Seas and take a look at this. A 49-yard field goal to end the scoring for the game and Jinx takes the victory 31-14 to and that's the final here in Broken Era. By Burke. Direct snap to Presley. Right side. Oh, it's Kirby up there block, helping block for him. He's got a first down and more. He's going to be gone. Be sure to go to yourview.com slash OK for highlights and replays of the Ford Game of the Week. And check out our podcast and past episodes at yourview.com slash OK. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, only the best in Oklahoma, like my man Jalil Johnson, make it the Ford High School Weekly. So thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm Dion Amade. Ford High School Weekly has been brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. And by Rib Crib, smoking good stuff since 92.